I'm Bethany. I'm a compulsive overeater. Hi, everybody. Happy Saturday. I weigh measure three meals a day off the gray sheet. I write it down. I call it into my sponsor. I don't eat in between no matter what. Absence has saved my life. Absolutely. Um, first of all, I want to thank Fangla for calling me and staying on me and asking me again and again, can you please, and being so patient because um, I'm in life, which is wonderful. Um, give you a quick history. I got absent in July 13th, 1986. I was 21 years old. My daughter is 21 years old and I'm sitting in a room right now because she's in her apartment in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, I, um, I became a vegetarian when I was 11 years old. It was not a weight issue. It was a, an, um, at all. I, it really was a life uh, choice because I'm a crazy animal lover. Um, I'll just tell you. Um, today it was zero degrees here. I live in New Hampshire and, um, I started my day on my knees asking God for help. My higher power, whatever works, works for each and every person. Um, I got on my knees. I went in the bathroom with my dog and we read all of our meditation books. Um, I read one page of the big book, the same page for a month. Um, I started to ask gray sheeters, what's your, or people in other program, what's your favorite page? Um, so I can gather that, write their name in my big book, which now has a band around it. Um, and I read the same page for the month. Who knows what will, something new always comes on that page, even though I keep rereading it. Um, I write down my food. I call it into my sponsor. I have been doing that since day one. Um, my mom, I had, this is my second sponsor, but I've had her most of my, my absence, except for about a year. Um, I have a sister in this program. She's more time than I do. And, um, I'm really grateful. I'm really grateful that I grew up in program. My mom, um, who's no longer with us, uh, got into AA and, um, was in recovery most of my life. And, I was not afraid of these rooms. I qualified at an A meeting this week and I was so grateful that I was not afraid of these rooms and the 12 steps and what a gift. But I knew something was different with me and food than most other people. Um, I addictively was exercising. My mother would come in my room and I would be doing sit-ups at like three in the morning. Um, I would only eat this food. I would only eat that food. I would um, not eat until a certain time. Um, but I was, I grew up in, a, in, in a, a very supportive, wonderful family, even though my parents got divorced. I felt very loved. I felt very cared for. Um, I have a disease that makes me special. This is nothing to be ashamed of. My father, who's not in program, told me that. He said, this is nothing to be ashamed of. Um, we have a disease. No one looks at someone who is diagnosed with cancer and their cancer comes back and says, it's your fault, right? It's who they are. I am grateful that this is what I have because I am grateful that I was introduced to gray sheep. This is the only solution for me. And I don't look for other solutions. Do I look for ways to like, <laughs> I'll just use this term, narc out so I don't have to do the next thing in my day? Yeah, sometimes, but that is tea. That is gum. That's a phone call. That's a meeting. That's a take the dog out. Um, I don't reach for those substances. And the reason I have that strength, the reason I have that focus, the reason I have tools is because of all of you, is because of the gray sheet. It's because of the meeting. It's, be, you know, I love in, in some of the readings, it says, uh, we became willing. I didn't know I was willing or we made a decision. I, I'm telling you, I was not there when the decision uh, was made that I made that I wanted to do gray sheet. I was in trouble. 
I stood in front of the mirror and wanted my thighs not to touch. Like that was so important. I wanted to look at that scale and have it say a different number. Um, then I'd be okay. No, that is not how we treat what we have. Actually, our path on recovery or with recovery is very, um, it's very simple and it's very satisfying and it's very gratifying. Um, I was thinking about um, some of the things I wanted to share today and I thought, my God, you know what? I've weighed and measured in a lot of places. Okay, so I got abstinent in New York City. I was studying in London. Um, my second semester, my junior year in college, studying in London, and that's really where I hit my bottom. Um, did a lot of drinking with this British sailor I was hanging out with, and and I was doing excellent in school. But I can remember running compulsively and eating compulsively, and um, and uh, we were bombing Libya at the time, so my parents told me I couldn't travel around Europe, and that really was a saving grace because I came home. And, um, and I got abstinent. My sister said something to me to the effect of, do you want to try gray sheet? And um, I guess I said yes, because I weighed and measured my dinner that night. And I've been weighing and measuring ever since. I think it was a Sunday. I don't know, but I think it was. Um, I just want to go back to one quick thing, and then I'm going to name the place. But I remember watching my sister. <laughs> some of you may know her. Um, I know some of you do. And... Like, if you were out to dinner with her, you couldn't touch the, the table when she was weighing and measuring. She didn't share her food, right? Like, you, you, there were so many things. And even though there were so many things, there was this look in her eye. There was this strength in her. And I didn't understand it until I started to do it. But I saw something. And that was a gift. Um, so, okay. So I got absent in New York. Um, and was going to meetings in New York City. Then I went back to London, abstinently. I honestly do not remember. I think I must have called my sponsor every day um, or I wrote her a letter every day, I, I, but I think I called her. There was no gray sheet there. So for me to hear that there's retreats there, I'm, oh, it's, it's magnificent. This, 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 this recovery is, is all over the world. Um, so I weighed and measured in London. I went to A meetings because there were no gray sheet meetings. I came back and I weighed and measured at Syracuse in my apartment with my best friend. Um, I graduated. I weighed and measured back in New York. I lived in the city. I moved to California. I helped another gray sheeter. She and I started the community there, which is, thank you, God, still there. I met my husband there. We moved to New Hampshire. And this is where I am. I've been here 20, almost about 20 years, um, zero degrees here this morning. And um, in between that, I've traveled. I went on my honeymoon to France and Italy. I weighed a measure. I've been on cruises, weighed a measure. I've been in the hospital, weighed a measure. My mother passed away, which is the biggest devastation of my life. I weighed a measure. Um, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, like I've weighed and measured, but I want to say one really important thing. Weighing and measuring by myself in my kitchen with myself and my higher power, that's huge when I'm by myself. Sometimes when we go out there and we put our dukes up and we're in these big events or we do this thing, it's the after. It's the after that we got through it. Now we got to keep going through it, you know? So um, what do I love about Gray Sheet? I love my sponsor. I love that I get to uh, reach out to people and they can make my decisions for me. My food is simple things. Um, something spills, something drops, something happens. I don't just say, oh, forget it. You know, I'll start tomorrow. no. Look at all these people here. I can call someone and say, I need you to tell me what to do. You know, that's not a weakness. That's a strength. And we touch our drug three times a day. And I don't look at it as a, um, um, a, 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 I'm not fighting with my food. I can't wait for my meals. I mean, I got to tell you, I still look for the biggest and the best. 
if you, if I, I promise you, um, I've gotten some of the hugest raws, what bunny bunnies eat. I've had my son measure them, weigh them for me. I've sh- like, I can have a sense of humor around this. I promise you, this was not a funny topic. For a very long time, I couldn't go to the movies because I binged on the pop stuff for years of my abstinence. Um, in my company in, in California, <laughs> you were not allowed to pop popcorn. Oh, sorry. We were not allowed to pop pop stuff in the kitchen in our office because if you burnt it, I would smell it all day. And that would just, you know, and this was after years, but I can set boundaries. So if I can learn to set boundaries, with my food, it gives me a chance to set boundaries in my life. And they may not make sense to anybody else out there. But if I don't want to go to an event because I don't feel comfortable and I don't want to weigh and measure my food, it's a matter of do I go to this event for a few hours and not stay absent or do I stay absent? And how do I stay absent? So maybe I eat before. Maybe I eat after. What do I do? But I can't afford to do something that is going to conflict with my abstinence. So even having, you know, a lot of 24s, a lot of back to back, I am still, I I still call my sponsor every day. When we were on cruises, I would send her a letter and I would put it in the mailbox before I ate my, my, my first meal of the three. Um, you know, there are ways to do this and they don't come from me. They come from that piece of paper. That piece of paper says most, says what we need, but we need a sponsor to go with that. Um, I recently had a sponsee who um, has come back to me a couple times and I got very, very, very specific about the fats with her. And I could hear, I could hear resistance. And um, I haven't heard from her and I pray for her and I reached out for her and I said, I heard you being resistant, but you know what? It's the only way I know how to do this. I rec- I'm in recovery. I am not recovered. So I knew it was her disease saying, what does it matter where the facts go? What is, what does it matter? It, you know, why do I have to commit exactly what I'm having? Why? Because that's what your sponsor is telling you to do or suggesting you do. And why? Because I can't make choices around that stuff. Tell me what to do. Then I can do my life maybe. And then that gives me guidance with my family and my feelings. And you know, that, that talk in my head that tells me things that may or may not be true. So I go to the big book, you know, I, 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 I ask for help. And, and especially during this really, um, I, I can't even put a word to what we're all going through. Um, in some ways, actually, it's really nice to be in my own home and, you know, go out and get my food and not really have to go out, although I've been traveling quite a bit. Um, Yet there's something to really be said about being in a live meeting and um, seeing other people, feeling their heartbeats, watching their recovery. Um, so, you know, uh, when, again, when I was uh, in London, I went to AA meetings. Um, I knew I was an alcoholic, but that helped me because there was a room full of people following the 12 steps, doing what we do in some ways. I mean, alcohol is, is, is made up of the foods we avoid. So you know, it's a good thing. It's not on gray sheet. Um, I wouldn't be able to control it. And you know what? I honestly, I don't feel like I'm controlling my food today. It's not a matter of control. Um, I love this program. I love what we do. And I feel that um, when you're outside looking in, it's confusing and it can feel restrictive and it is definitely different. Um, Yet the recovery, um, never have I heard someone go out and come back and say, it's better out there. 
when they come back, I say, you're my hero. Sorry, I didn't tell you your time is up. I'm I the missed thing the you're... five minutes. I got <laughs> caught up in your, in your qualifications. Oh, Sorry. no worries. This, this is really like my, my, my last thought. Thank you so much. But um, when people walk back in this room, you're my hero. You're in here. And we need all of you. I do. So um, with that, I wish you all a wonderful, abstinent day. And no matter what.